Now, before we start this video, I just want to say, if you are new to the channel, I have been literally doing the Sakura Succubus series uh, since 2021, at least over a year now. So, it's very clear that um, a lot of people are not really aware of um, the content that's going on on this channel. So, allow me to reintroduce it then. Um, Hi, my name is Ed Meister. I do a lot of gameplays, um, and I do music content, and especially updates on the channel to let y'all know what's actually going on. And that's pretty much it for now, because I'm not sure what type of content I'm going to make in the future. But other than that, um, oh, and also the stream highlights as well. <laughs> I should have put that out there. But also, one more thing I want to make this clear is that uh, viewer discretion is advised. This a uh, particular series is rated M for mature. Sometimes A plus to 18 plus, depending on what's going on. But yeah. Alright, night, welcome back to another episode of Sakura Succubus 3. And where we left off, we have been warned by Marina to stay away from our ex. So, you guys already know the deal. We have to do our best to avoid her as much as possible. But something tells me, um, there's gonna be no way out of this. And I just have a feeling. I, I just have a feeling. The train rattles around me as I make my way back home. Since today's a Sunday, I don't have any work to attend to, which is just as well since it's almost nine. Uh, if I did have to go into the office, I'd be late for sure. The boss might be taking a soft approach with me as of late, but I don't think he let my tardiness slide. He's such a stickler for timekeeping. He might as well be German. <laughs> <sighs> Though I had a pleasant night, I fell a little sleepy. Marina's early stirring roused me and I couldn't get back to sleep. I felt tired. Maybe I'll get some shut-eye when I return to my apartment. That sounds appealing. I do feel bad for Marina, though. It's a weekend and she has a large charity event last night and she still has to go into the office. I complain about my job all the time. I don't think nobody, or hell, I don't like anybody likes working after hours, but Marina has it way tougher than I do. She's very impressive in all sorts of ways. I hope I was able to relieve her of at least some of the heavy burdens last night, though I did, inadvertently, create a whole new problem by sullying her new expensive dress. She told me not to apologize on pain of legal action, but I still feel kind of bad about it. I've never been in a position to ruin a 3 million yen dress before. The idea might sound catastrophic, but in practice, not it's not that much fun. The dress isn't the only thing weighing on my mind either. Mm. The train ruins a, oh, sorry. The train rounds a corner, my head bumps against the wall, and I wince. I can't stop thinking about what Marina said this morning. According to her, the ruler of all succubi has her eye on me. I'm not sure what that entails exactly, but... If you intrigue her enough, there's a chance she could try to take you with her to the succubus realm to make you her new plaything. Could that really happen? It sounds like a storyline lifted straight from a light novel. Ironic. The sorts will, the long, unwillingly titles you see in the bookstore windows, stealing shelf space from the classic high, my high school English teacher, love like Desai and Mishima, sorry. I guess it doesn't sound like too terrible a fate in theory, but Lady Yu is 
is a jealous, possessive sort. If she gets her hands on you, there's no telling what will happen. I don't know about the first thing about Lady Yu. Oh, you do. You definitely do. But Marina's words don't paint her in the most compelling light. To be honest, she sounds kind of scary. If she could use Succubus' power, she'll be able to watch me wherever I go, whatever I do. I'm only a weak, feeble man. There's no way of hiding from her. What will happen if she really does decide to kidnap me? I'll be entirely at her mercy. And I'm afraid I'll never see me, uh, Marina or the others ever again. My journey back home was uneventful, despite my anxieties. I mean, nobody s uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I met nobody suspicious on the, the train. God damn it. I met nobody suspicious on the train, not even Cosmos, nor during my walk back to my apartment. Everything seems normal. The sky is blue, a few birds are chirping, and the people who I pass by on a gray sidewalk hurry by without a word. Nobody gives me a second glance. I fumble with my keys for a while, for a little while, outside my apartment. My palms feel sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, though it's not, not a particularly hot day, and I dropped them twice. Why am I shaking? Nothing's bad happened. There's no reason to feel afraid. Everything's normal, like I said, but something doesn't feel right. What could it possibly be? I breathe in deeply and then examine my apartment. It looks the same as it always does with a dreary window and the age spotted walls. When I try to front the window handle, it doesn't budge. It's still locked, just as I left it last night. I don't think anybody's been here during my absence, but even if they have, how would I know? Sucky by the Cosmos can bypass locked doors with magic. <sighs> I should know from past experience, she's done it enough times. Theoretically, this you is far stronger than Cosmos. She could get into my house with ease if she wanted. She could be sitting inside waiting for me right now. In fact, she could... Stop it. I cast... I cast... Uh, I castigate myself under my breath. You're being stupid. There's nothing wrong. You didn't even know Lady Yu was watching you until an hour ago. Why are you letting it bother you so much now? Of course. I know why it's bothering me now. It's because back then, I didn't know there was anything for me to be bothered by. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. My overactive imagination is trying to make up for my lack of panic over the last week. I was being observed unknown, and it's working too. You need to get your act together. There's nothing to be afraid of, just go in. I grip my key a little bit more tightly, then I twist it. The lock from my front door gave way and I step inside. I close the door behind me, I take off my shoes, then I pad into the kitchen. There's nobody here. Well, of course there isn't. I sigh deeply relieved. What did you expect? You're so stupid. You must have worked too hard than you thought this week, last week. You should probably take a nap before you start hallucinating for real. And you really have to stop talking to yourself. <sighs> Scolding myself thus, I open my bedroom door. It looks as much the same as always. My futon is arranged neatly in one corner and my shelves are stacked with books and CDs. My blinds are up. Sunlight fluttered in across my tatty mats. Tatami mats, excuse me. So far, everything as it should be. With an exception. 
it's only one exception, mind you. I'm sh and but it sure is a doozy. I fucking called it. Are you kidding me? And I had a bad feeling from the beginning. Why did I not see that coming? I need to shut the fuck up, man. Seriously? Fuck! Damn, she looks good, though. Shit! Ah, you're finally here, Hiroki. You kept me waiting for quite a long time. Don't you know it's rude to keep a lady waiting? I'm disappointed in you. What, what, what? You, I, uh, if I had tucked my keys into my pocket already, I'm sure I would have dropped them. I feel like I dropped my jaw way all the way down to the floor. I was right. There really is somebody in my apartment. It's a mysterious girl. I don't know how old is she, but she might be the same age as myself. In her mid to late 20s or so. She's kneeling on my tatami floor, hands upon her lap, like a Hina doll. She rises to her feet upon, however, upon seeing me. Everything about this woman is graceful and elegant. Her hair is long and dark, and is cascade all the way down to the small of her back. She's attired in a soft, Swith of a white and blue fabric, and her eyes are similarly outlined in blue. When she rises to her feet, she does so without a sound. Her dress ripples like the waves of an ocean. Her outfit looks like it should be cumbersome, but it doesn't hammer her in the slightest. She looks just like a goddess, but there's something familiar about her. I'm sure I've seen her before, but where? Could it be? So, is this how you, you mean to greet me? I am disappointed. The woman pursed her lips together in evident distinct. I thought you would be happy. Didn't you miss me in the slightest during the last few years? I am wounded. What? But you... Her words stir in a series of memories within me. I recall a cool power blue sky, a similar shade to this woman's dress, the roof of my old high school with its iron fence, a gentle breeze, the fluttering of a plaid skirt, hands clasped, eyes wide, a gentle query spoken between two students in their final years of school. I know this might be sudden, so forgive me for the intrusion. You are free to turn me down if you wish. I do not mean to inconvenience you, but please, Ogazawara, no Hideki, will you go out with me? Ah! A single symbol escaped from my lips. It tumbles from my mouth into the silliness of my apartment. It seems to shatter on the tatami floor. That's why this woman looks so familiar. It's been a long time since we last spoke, but I still have dreams about her. I never thought I'd see her again. I thought it was impossible. Didn't she go and study abroad? I was certain she'd be in America by now or Europe. She always took everything so se took everything seriously, but she's particularly f fastidious, fastidious, fastidious. Excuse me about her studies. Though she was a transfer student, she had the best grades in our class. She could have done anything and gone anywhere. Everybody knew she was special. That's why the class kept her distance, I think. They knew she wasn't like us. That's why I was so surprised when she asked me out on the rooftop only a few months before the university exams, oh, entrance exams. She was my first ever girlfriend. We were only together for a little while, but I cherished that time all the same. I never thought, this is Yuki? I stared at her stunned. I think this was easier to swallow the existence of Succubi than it is to, than it is the sudden, seemingly 
miraculous appearance of my ex-girlfriend. Yuki, is that really you? So you remember me. Yuki smiled. I am relieved. I had feared you might have forgotten. I thought it was painful. Oh, trust me, we have not forgotten. More like fear to stay away from you! <laughs> Yuki rests one hand upon her chest. I did not like to think that our time together meant so little to you when you were my very first. You, you were my very first too. You were my very first girlfriend. I know it's been a while, but I never forgotten. I never forget you. I couldn't. Why, thank you. You have always been so passionate, though. You needn't shout not so loudly. I'm standing right here. Yes, um, I'm sorry. It's all right. I like the passion part about you. It is amazing. You were very dear to me once, Hiroki. You still are, in fact. It's been a while, and much has changed, myself included. I am not the girl you used to know. Include, and bore indeed, the girl you thought you knew. I've grown quite a bit since then. Yuki tips her head to one side. She seems to be so, seems to be considering something, but she sighs. I did not think I would ever see you again, but I suppose I have always been drawn to you. Once again, you piqued my interest. What do you mean? Didn't you go study abroad? I went abroad, in a matter of speaking. I had duties to attend to, you see. I still do. I am a very busy woman. I'm sure that if Fumi knew I was here, she would scold me. I am behaving poorly, but what am I to do? I thought I could leave you be, but how could I? That is no longer possible. Wait, what? I stared at Yuki in what a sure is a very intelligent manner. Not! It seems like it's been my lot in life as of late to be perpetually surprised and confused at this, at, by everything. Sometimes I wish I could instigate events by my own volition instead of being forced to react to them. I'm starting to feel like, I feel a little like a chess piece being pushed around on the board with no free will of my own. This is all insane. Let's slow down for a second. You said you knew Hifumi? Yes. Yuki blinks, her expression uncomprehending. Is that an issue? I guess not, it depends on which Hifumi you're talking about. Why, the same Hifumi you know. Yamamoto Hifumi, the famous actress, who else? Right, right, who else, indeed. This is even more complicated than I at first imagined. So. How do you know Ifumi? More importantly, how did you know that I knew Ifumi? I haven't seen her in a while, and our relationship is supposed to be a secret. It may, it may be a secret from the Primus Masses, but I am not easily fooled. It is my duty. You see, to know every, everything my subjects are getting up to. Subjects? Yes, indeed. I have been monitoring you, Ifumi, for quite some time, in a U2, in Cosmos, and Marina, and Hazel. They're all my subjects. They can't hide nothing from me. I see all and I know all. And I know exactly what they have been doing with you. They are trying to take you from me. What? Then you mean? The voice trails off. I know exactly what this all means. I would had been pretty stupid for not putting things together right now, but it seems so ridiculous. As if I wasn't enough my high school girlfriend to be appear in my apartment out of the blue. That would be the biggest plot twist of, of its own right, but this? Isn't this too much of a coincidence? What are the odds? Yuki, you're not really Yuki, are you? How? That's how you refer to yourself with, when we were in school together, but Marini, you sound quite different. Yes, I can imagine. She has never much liked me. What scornful and in hits does she used to refer to me? That bitch, perhaps? What? No! Yuki is such a demure, mild-mannered girl. Hearing her say a word like bitch is quite shocking. My perception of her is falling apart here. 
I thought she was a serious, tranquil beauty, but in actuality, you're you, aren't you? You're Lady You. You're the ruler of Sakibai? Yes, I am. Yuki, you, rather, doesn't refute this impossible claim. Indeed, she's... I am Lady You. I once lived in the human realm, to all young Sakibai do, to learn the human culture and of your ways. But since the completion of my training, I have dealt with the realm of the succubi. I am the one who... Oh, the succubi who has m You have met, met, look up to. They all revered and fear me. At least they should. But perhaps, given my youth and relative inexperience, I've been too soft on them. Yuki? No, use! I remember that what she really is, you... Flash. My subjects can be very, has been very, very wicked. They have all been trying to sway your heart. I am a magnificent ruler. I am no tyrant. I am prepared to forgive one or two in indiscretions. You are an interesting person, so I do not begrudge my subjects for their internal interests. But three times, four, five, six, use fingers close to fix. I cannot stand by and watch them seduce you any longer. It is simply not fair. I am the one who you met first, not them. You were my first partner, and to this day, you are my only partner. I've loved you sin sincerely, and parts of that love still continues to exist within me. I'm sorry, you, as much as it kills me, bitch. You are literally trying to put me back into that goddamn realm, and I am not trusting that shit. Fuck no. I'm sure you feel it too. We have a connection. We are meant to be here together. I've often thought of you. True, but there is no buts. It cuts across me, her voice sharp and cold. My legs tremble. I feel faint. I remember that Yuki was quite cold and distant. A lot of guys in my class were perturbed by her. They thought of they thought her unsettling. I thought so too, until she confessed my feelings to me. On the rooftop. That comes to a huge surprise. I haven't realized Yuki, the stern Austria honor student, could even feel love. I was wrong on that count, though. Her love was very earnest and sincere. Though so much that it survived for years. Yuki has always been serious about her schoolwork. It stands to reason she's just as serious about her heart. I do not want my subjects to take you for themselves. They do not deserve you. I want you all for myself, and I've come here to stake my claim. Oh, hell no. You ain't touching me, bitch! I will have you back. Uh, th that's uh, very nice, Yuki. Uh, you? But, uh, <laughs> is this really your decision to make? I'm happy to see you again, of course. I don't mind you having a cup of tea so we can reminisce about the old times, but there's a reason why they're, they're the old times! I'm not your boyfriend anymore. I should be able to date whoever I want, shouldn't I? If you were with other people, I, I would agree readingly, but such logic does not apply in your case. You are mine. Crap, her eyes starting to look scary. Yeah, you can fucking see it. <laughs> the lights in her pupils have vanished. She isn't listening to me at all. I can't just go along with this madness, can I? Uh... Motherfucker, try to reason with her! I am not yours, I am my own person, damn it! I rent this apartment, I have a job, and there are people who care about me. I can't go to the succubus room with you, I can't! You can, you must, you do not have a choice in this matter. Takes another step towards, she backed me in the corner. There's no way for me to run. I shall make you look at me and only me. I am your very first girlfriend, and I fully intend to be your last. Now stop struggling, this neat and hurt. This will be all over soon. You, well, wait! I tried to put it, but to little avail, you took me by the arms and pulled me in. Um. Uh, not what I had in mind. Um, I, I guess this is where we're gonna have to end, I guess. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a roller coaster just now. 
Um, if you guys want to see more, please feel free to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. It's been Zach, guys. Later.